So this training is a continuation of all the other trainings we are doing right now, trying to uh, uh, present all these protocols that uh, are supported on the Telco Bridges platforms and how how it what, what it is, how they are configured. And uh, now this session is on SS7 MTP3. So I'm gonna go through this presentation, uh, the MTP3 overview, what is supported on Telco Bridges products, how we do the configuration, uh, how we check the status and some troubleshooting tools to help you uh, debugging those systems while they are uh, installed. So the MTP3 protocol is used to route packets, okay, messages, through the SS7 network. These messages can be ISOC messages, which are like uh, uh, call control messages, so TDM, uh, TDM resources, call control, or SCCP uh, TCAP type traffic, which are more data related. Uh, and, and one example we give for SCCP traffic is, is SMS messages. So when you have, uh, when you send SMS messages over SS7, over your mobile network, it goes to SS7. Uh, SCCP messages. Okay. Um, the packets are routed using a point code. So each packet has a point code information inside, and this is how the system will know how to relay this uh, message to the next hop into the SS7 network. Each element in the SS7 network have their own point code, and uh, they, they relay those messages as uh, the point codes are related in those networks. Okay. Um, we, we can compare a point code to an IP uh, address in a SS7 network, in a IP network, I mean, and uh, it's, it's the same thing, right? So we send a packet using a specific point code and in IP, you send with an IP address. That's how you reach your destination. Right? It's both of them are layer three in the architecture. Um, MTP3 does just a bit more is that it will distribute messages on multiple links. So if you have uh, uh, multiple links going to a destination, it, it is able to send traffic on any one of those links, either for redundancy. So if you lose a link, it continues to transfer the messages or for performance. So if you have uh, a lot of traffic to, to, uh, to send, you may want to distribute it on multiple links to reach your capacity. The MTP3 protocol works on TDM using MTP2 as a lower layer, and it works on IP using M2PA or M2UA as an underlying layer. Okay. Uh, we already did some trainings on these two subjects, so if you want to uh, look at those trainings, you will get more information there. Here I'm concentrating more on the MTP3 level of the system. So the MTP3 can work in two main modes. One is the uh, SSP mode, signaling switching point. Uh, so you see here the MTP3 stands at the uh, layer three. This is where the point codes are uh, referenced in the uh, system. Okay. It is used to terminate, like I mentioned, ISOP and SCCP signaling. So these protocols are attached to MTP3. And when ISOP wants to send a message, it will send to MTP3 first, and MTP3 will find the correct destination for this message. The underlying layer, like I mentioned, can be MTP2 running over a TDM network. So it will use a T1 or an E1 time slot to send the data. Normally, these uh, time slots are at 64 kilobit per second or they can be also at 56 kilobit per second. And uh, you have also high-speed links, which are 1.5 megabit or two megabit per second, and you can transfer your uh, ISOP or SCCP messages on those links. Right. Or you can also use, uh, like I said, IP to send your, your data. This is called SIGTRAN when we go in that direction. So you attach MTP3 to M2PA, M2PA runs over SCTP uh, with an IP network here, and uh, all the packets are sent in MTP3 will be packaged in M2PA packets in SCTP sent over uh, the IP link 
and this is SS7 signaling over IP. So this is uh, here, like I mentioned, SIG trend. You can also be a signaling transfer point. So you see here, it's still layer three for the M MTP3 traffic. And you have your STP functionality, which you can route traffic. So your traffic can be routed from TDM MTP2 back out to TDM. So it can be the same network, but usually it would, these would be different networks here. Um, or it can be also uh, routed from uh, IP network to a TDM network. So this is used a lot when you have older uh, MTP2 links and you want to attach that to newer uh, SIG trend links using M2PA. Uh, at the MTP3 level here, you need to define all the point codes so that when you receive a packet from the network, it knows how to transfer to uh, this packet to another network. There's also the SCP mode, which I did not mention. It's similar to this here, and this is used to query uh, LNP, uh, local network profitability, 800 numbers, and stuff like that. It's the same architecture that you have uh, underneath. When you talk about MTP3, you also talk about the type of links, and these links are depending on what, it, what the link connects, right? So the, a link, for example, will connect a SSP to a STP. So it's called an A link here. If you connect uh, two STPs together, it's called a C link. And if you connect two SSPs together, then it's a F link. Uh, for uh, the Techo Bridges uh, side of this, it doesn't change anything. All the links are supported. Uh, there's other types of links that are there also, B links, D links, E links, they're all connecting different elements in the network. Uh, and these are all supported uh, by, by our systems. And it's just a way to uh, present what type of uh, MTP2 link that is, or M2P. You have uh, point codes, I mentioned that already. So you need to define uh, the point codes in the network. So each signaling element has a point code. So whether it is an SSP, STP, or SCP, they will need to have a point code. Um, when you talk about uh, your system's point code, then this will be an OPC. So that will be where the packet originates from. And the destination point code is where you can send the packets. So normally you would have one OPC for your system and then maybe multiple destinations where you can send the traffic. The point code format, uh, depending on where you install these systems, it could be uh, NC or ITU. Uh, there's different formats. We can present it as bits like this, so 888 or 383, or it can also be decimal or hexadecimal values. And, and uh, it's just a way to present those, uh, those point codes in the network. Uh, when you use uh, Wireshark, you can decide how you want to display those uh, point code formats. When we talk about MTP3, we also need to talk about link sets. And uh, link sets will combine multiple uh, links together. Right? So for example, you have maybe here between your SSP and an STP, you may have two MTP2 links here configured in your system. And you can aggregate them into an MTP3 link set. And then in that MTP3 link set, you have identifiers for each of the links, for example, SLC zero for the first link and SLC one for the first link. The SLC value is from zero to 15. So you can have up to 16 links in a link set. In general, we see two links per link set. And the main reason is that each of the link will be on a separate uh, T1 or E1 TDM link, or they will be on separate IP paths when you're using M2PA so that you have redundancy. So the main reason to have these two here is to have uh, redundancy. The other thing that the MTP3 does automatically is the 
load sharing. So when you have two links in a link cell, you will send packets on no, or the MTP3 layer will send packets on one uh, link or the other link, uh, and it will balance the traffic between the two links. If there is a link that fails, the MTP3 knows that it has failed and is able to send the traffic on the other link. Right? So if there were packets transmitted here and did not reach destination, it will send here because all MTP3 packets are acknowledged and, and ordered all as well. So when you send traffic, even if you're using multiple link, at the other end, all the packets will be ordered uh, in the, uh, correctly. And uh, normally when you have uh, multiple links here and you're running regular traffic, you make sure that your link utilization is not more than at least 50%, but usually we calculate at 40% so that if one of the link goes down, the other link can take over all the traffic. Okay, so uh, that's how we calculate that usually. Um, as a rule of Tons, uh, I use about uh, 25 calls per second per link. So let's say you have uh, uh, two links like this. It supports 25 calls per second with full redundancy. So if one link fails, it supports it. If you need more than 25 calls per second, it is suggested to get more links into uh, a link set. And here I'm talking about MTP2 links, so TDM64 kilobit links. If you're using High-speed links, if you're using M2PA, normally you don't have this limit of uh, uh, traffic because it, it's much higher traffic. Uh, eyes up messages take very small bandwidth on the link. To uh, validate that the connection is correct between two endpoints, here I show two SSPs, so that would be uh, an F-link here. Uh, there are messages that are sent on MTP3 layer when the links are activated. Okay. So the MTP3 will send a SLTM, signaling link test message, to the other side. In that message, you have a network indicator, the point codes, and also the link identifier. All right. So it will send this information to the other end here, and the other side will respond to SLTM. A acknowledgement with the same information. So when you see the SLTA with the same information, it means the connection is accepted. You will get a SLTM, SLTA per link that you have in a link set. Okay, so each link will have, well, in this case, the same information of point code and network indicator, but it will have also the SLC, which will be different for this link and for this link. So maybe zero and one here. Um, and that's uh, a big part of the troubleshooting is done with these SLTM and SLTA messages because you can validate a lot of things. First, you're using the correct national, international network here. Uh, OPCs, are they the correct OPCs? And is it using the correct SLC identifier? So you, you already uh, troubleshoot a lot of things with only these messages. So you have the MTP3 links. You have the MTP3 link sets, which regroups these MTP3 links. And then you have the routes. The routes will uh, help us to identify all possible destination of a packet in a network. So you need to define every single point code that you can send traffic to. Right? The point codes in the SS7 network are static. Right? There's no, uh, there's no uh, dynamic point codes. Everything needs to be predetermined. So you need to configure those routes. If, for example, I have this network, I have my here SSP and I need to reach the endpoint SSP here, and it needs to go through these STPs, all of these will have point codes. So here I will have my originating point code. I will have destination point codes for each of the STPs and the final destination point code to reach my destination. So how do I, after I have defined those point codes, how do I reach them? I need to create routes. All right? So you, need, you will need to have one route for each STP, one MTP3 route for each STP. 
plus you will need a route to reach the final destination here so that when we get a packet we know how to send these uh, packets plus you need to have a local route that's when they send us traffic we need to make sure that we capture this traffic so in this scenario we will have uh, one route to each STP, one route to the final destination, and one local route here. So we'll have four routes in this case. If we're connecting directly to the SSP, let's say we have a Netlink and we connect directly to the SSP, then you only need one route towards the SSP and one route towards you. So only two routes are necessary. There can be link set priority in a route. So, for example, uh, if you want to reach this destination here, you may uh, use this link set here or this link set here. And you can say, I want to have priority of this link set because it uses a route which is uh, more popular. And then if this one is down, then I will use this one instead. By default, it's always low cherry unless you change the priority and force a different priority. There's a uh, management messages also on the MTP3 network to say that one link is used, the other link is used now. Uh, but uh, I think the most important management messages is uh, TFP, so traffic prohibited. So for example, if you lose one link here to the STP, it won't do anything. But if you lose both links here, the STP will inform the other side that the point code 555, let's say this is a, a point code that we use here, 555, and it's going to say to the SSP, if you want to reach 555, don't use this route, right? because it's blocked. So the SSP here will know, since it has two routes to reach the station, to use this path here. Right? If these links come back up, then we'll send a TRA, traffic restart allowed, and we'll be able to send traffic again towards uh, this point code through that SDP. The MTP3 is supported on all the Telco Bridges products, either TNG or TSG type uh, units. Uh, when we do here, we have termination mode. That means we terminate all the way to eyes up. But if you do the STP mode, then you can use it on both type of platforms here. Same thing for the TNG and TSG. TSG are signaling gateway, right? So that's why we don't have the termination mode on the system. It's only STP. Or it can be also a signaling gateway mode. I didn't uh, explain this when I do the when I will do the M3UA presentation. I will show the M3UA to MTP3 uh, link that we can do with the system. A number of link sets that are supported. Number of point originating point codes. So you can have on your site multiple originating point code if you're especially if you're on different networks. But it could also be on the same networks to represent multiple. Uh, 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 identifiers in the network, but you can have also uh, 512 DPCs, so then you can reach multiple endpoints with the system. So what do we need for configuration? First is the lower layer. So you have the choice between MTP2 or M2PA or M2UA. Of course, here on TDM, this one on IP. So on TDM, these are T1E1s, DS3s, OC3s. So this is the physical uh, layer. Plus, then you have your MTP2 link, which can be 56, uh, 64, or a high-speed link. And you can configure this on your uh, E1 time slot. The M2PA here is over IP, so that's different. Then you here you need to use IP, so local IP, remote IP, and also SCTP ports. This is how you will identify your uh, traffic, your IP traffic for uh, SS7 messages. Once you have these layers built, then you can start configuring configure MTP3. Configure MTP3, you need first to know what is the variant you will be using. You need to know your point codes and all the other point codes in the network. You need to know if you're going to use link sets. So normally you have at least one link set 
per destination that you have. So one link set per STP or one link set per direct SSP you connect to. You can group up to 16 links in a link set. It can be either MTP2, M2PA, or M2UA links. You have a SLC value for each link. So 16 from 0 to 15, you will uh, allocate that to the link. And you have, uh, I mentioned priority of route, but you can also have priority of links in the link set. So the, the, it's possible that you have multiple links and you want to use one link uh, more than others. Let's say, uh, let's say you have one link that is satellite, one is land-based, you want to use the land base. So you can do priority of links in the link set as well. In routes, I mentioned already, you need one route to each STP and each SSP, one local route, and I mentioned also priority of link sets in a row. So when we connect to the uh, web interface, uh, we need to select point codes here. You need to configure your point codes. You require at least one OPC that identifies your system. Uh, and you need one point code for each signaling transfer point. DPCs or signaling switching point here, DPCs. So you need uh, all these point codes. So you will define something like this here, uh, type OPC, the format, and uh, either bit decimal or hexadecimal format. So you can choose how you enter the information here. And you need to have DPCs here. This is the NC uh, format. And uh, again, you present here. Then you can select MTP3 here. In MTP3 configuration, you have uh, you, you give it a name. It doesn't really matter here just to identify it. And what type of, of signaling point it is. Right? So it could be SP or SSP. It's the same thing. Or it can be STP mode. So when you know you're only transferring between uh, networks and you'll never go to ISOP or SCCP upper layers, then you will choose STP. Um, once you've uh, selected this, you need to configure uh, the link type, so ITU or ANSI, and also the service type here, which is uh, national, international, or you have other uh, options for this. All right, so these information are being sent in NTP3 messages, so it needs to know the correct format. When you look at the uh, at, at MTP3, uh, MTP3 trace in the Wireshark uh, system, you also need to specify the same information. Otherwise, you won't see it correctly. Next is the link set configuration. So once you have defined the MTP3 uh, system, you can define the link sets. You will have one link set to each STP as A links and one uh, link set per SSP as F links. The, when you define a link set, you need to specify your point code and the destination point code. And then you need to specify all the links that you will uh, attach to that link set. So it could be one link, two link, up to 16 links here. And it could be MTP2, M2PA, or MTP2. UA type links. This is where you define also the SLC value here. Right? You need to specify what is the value that will be inserted into the message so MTP3 can recognize this link. Then when you configure your MTP3 routes, you will have one route to each STP, one route to your target. SSPs and one local route to your originating point code. So you see something like this, or you say if it's a route to you, you just need to specify OPC here. Are you a SP or a STP? This is more for uh, MTP3 management messages that it is used. And how many link sets are attached to this destination? So a lot of time when you have uh, connecting to STPs, you will have two link sets, local and two link link sets remote going to both link sets to both STPs to reach a destination. Uh, but if you are connected directly, then you will have just one link set like it's shown here, connecting directly from your OPC to your DPC.
So once you've configured your MTP3, you see there, there's only a few steps to configure DAMP. Uh, the next step is, do you need to configure anything else? If you are only an STP, so that means transferring data from M2, M2P8 to MTP2, uh, or, or MTP2 to MTP2, you don't need to configure anything else. Okay, that's enough, and, and uh, your, your configuration is complete. If you're an SSP, that means terminating data, uh, you need to configure the upper layers, either ISOP or SCCP layers on the system so that you can receive this traffic. Yeah, I will uh, present this in, in uh, another uh, training session. So right now, the only thing you need to do is activate the configuration and your configuration is complete. Once your configuration is done, you need to go in the status section. The status section here will uh, present everything that is configured on the system and if they are up and available. All right, so the MTP3 status is here, and that's where we need to go to look at the status. Okay, so you click on status, MTP3, and then you see these two uh, main information. One is all the links that are configured on MTP3 and you will see if they are up or down. The name here is what we have put in the configuration. So if you want to make it clear, maybe you can say uh, MTP3 link going to this provider and this MTP3 link goes to this other provider. So it's very clear when you look here, which uh, MTP3 link is down. And then here you have your link sets. Here we have only one link set, but of course you could have multiple link sets in the configuration. And you can see which route uses this uh, link set in the system. So you have additional information about the link when you when you click on. Let me just go back here. When you click on this this link here, so if you select that, you get addi additional information about the link. Something like this, right? Where you see a uh, number of of uh, messages signaling unit dropped, or or if it's congestion or uh, uh, you know, you see congested here, if it's blocked and these things, you will see this information. The main thing is, of course, is it up here? Um, you have also an option here to inhibit a link. All right, so this is normally for uh, testing. So when you deploy a, a network like this, you want to test if all the links work. So what you do is you can inhibit all the links except one and make sure that the traffic uh, goes to that link. Of course, since it's at the MTP3 level, you cannot inhibit the last link of a link set. So for example, if you have four links, you can disable, you can in inhibit, sorry, three links. But if the three links are inhibited, you can't enable, uh, inhibit the last one because then you won't have communication and you won't be able to reestablish that. Okay? So normally you want to test, you, you inhibit one link, the other link has some traffic, then you make it, uh, put it back to normal and then inhibit the other link. The other thing I want to mention here is that when you select here, for example, you say, yes, I want to inhibit the link and you click on apply states, it will apply it immediately. Okay, so you will see the effect of this uh, change immediately. Anything we do in the status section is applied immediately on the system. Um, let me just mention here before I continue, uh, you can inhibit the link at the MTP3 level, but you can also disable a link at the MTP2 or M2PA level. Okay, so when you do that, it's, uh, you have a bit more control than at the MTP3 level. So you can do the same thing per link. In that case, you could disable all the links of a link set. The next step you can look at, here you add the links, right? So the next step you can look at is the link set. You can see if it's active. A, a link set will be active if at, at least one of these lower layer links are still available. Right? So the traffic will go through that active link. Um, and again, you can deactivate a link set. So here the default mode is active, but you can say, uh, deactivate the link so that you can test when you have multiple routes going to multiple STPs, 
that your traffic goes through all the routes uh, again for testing. All right, so that, that's it as information for, for the NTP3 configuration and status. Uh, the, I will show you the lab setup that we have. The lab setup is just to demonstrate uh, the configuration, the status, and, and the tra traffic capture. Uh, I have, in that case, one MTP2 link and one M2PA link in the same link set. And, Let's say it's not a usual configuration, but it's it's good for demonstrating both types of links uh, for for a, a lab setup. Um, it's a SSP to SSP connection, so I don't have any STPs in my configuration. Uh, so the, I have my point codes, link sets, and routes configured in the system. Since I'm using an MPP2 link, I need to have an E1 configuration in the system so that my MTP2 link can go over that E1. So I did configure that. And to be able to make a call, I configured the upper layer, which is eyes up. So I have uh, my circuit groups, which link to the physical time slot so the voice can pass inside those messages. So if you look at my uh, lab setup, it's something like this. So both sides are configured the same way, but just face to face. So you see the circuit at the eyes up level are the same here. The point codes, I have 701 on one side, 702, 702, sorry, on the other side. Only one link set. The link set includes two links. One is an M2PA link here, which is uh, an IP and port. And one is an MTP2 link here, which runs just on time slot uh, one of the E1 link here and being relayed to the other side. So my traffic will go like this or like this, depending on how the MTP3 decides to route the traffic. Uh, I will show you the global status from the web portals. I will show you that in a minute. Just before I go there, I will also show you a signaling trace. So to, to get a single MTP3 signaling trace, we connect SSH to the internet type TB6 trains, and then this will create a capture file that is viewable from uh, Wireshark. So I will show you uh, this, and I will show you also the TB report. Okay. So let me just switch my presentation here, get this out of the way, bring back my training uh, system. So let me just put this slightly bigger like this. Okay, very good. So here I'm connected to the uh, system. It is a, a one plus one system running this version here. And you can see that everything is green now. I have MTP2 links and 2PA links and MTP3. So if I just go to the status here, you will see my two links and my link set. Right. So before going to this part, I will just show you the configuration. So of course I needed to have MTP2 links and the M2PA links here in this configuration, but I don't want to show this now. This is in another training session, but I want to show my point codes here. These are the point codes I've used, 701, 702. When you look at the point codes, you can also see who is using uh, those point codes. So I see link sets here and I see routes. So these are uh, being used and also used by the eyes up upper layer. Surface. So here I have only two point codes. Normally you would get many destination point codes in a system so that you can reach multiple destinations. If I go to my MTP3 configuration, which is right here, MTP3 configuration, you can give it a name. You have only two choices of SP or STP. If you're not sure, you will use the default one, which is uh, SP. Timers, uh, these and like all other uh, protocols in the system, you can adjust the timers. The names here, like T15 timer, come from the uh, ITU or NC MTP3 specifications, right? And it says how long it should be uh, and these are default values. It's very rare we have to change this. The default parameters work really well. 
There's other advanced parameters here, mostly used for signaling gateway modes. When you use MTP3 in a signaling gateway, we may want to modify these parameters. Here you have uh, networks, MTP3 networks. So I didn't mention this uh, very much because normally you have only one network in a system, but you can create multiple networks with different link types, different service types, and, and different uh, point code lengths, right? So you, you can define NC, ITU, national, international type of networks. In most cases, we see only one MTP3 network. Okay, and this is where you can configure it, international, reserved. So these are the SSF value. You see SSF equals zero, SSF equals three values that you see in the uh, I, uh, MTP3 messages link type you see the different link types that are are possible uh and then the format the one i didn't mention here is 16 bit is for uh, japan um mt3 link sets here you can have multiple link sets and you will have multiple link sets if you connect to multiple stp or multiple ssps in this case i'm connecting just one so i have only one link set in that link set i have my point code which were configured here in the point code section and I have the destination point code, which is the other system uh, that I'm connecting to. In that link set, we have uh, links. Right? Here I have two links. One of them is an MTP2 link, which was configured here in MTP2. One of them is an M2PA link, which was configured here in M2PA. Each one of them have a different SLC value to identify them at the MTP3 level and at the other end, which uh, link is matched to the other side. And if I just click on here, there's not much here. You just choose what type of link to bind, and then you choose which link, and you put the SLC value here, and link, link test characters, not so important here. You can put any information here or keep the default uh, test packets, and you see, you have your priorities here you can change. In a link set, you need to have at least one links link at priority zero in the system. Okay, so uh, you need to have one. The others could be one, two, or three. A special case here, if it's a C link, you want to select that. So between uh, mated STP pairs, S, uh, S it's just for management messages that we have. Okay, if I go back, you have the other, the only difference with this other link is it's M2PA instead of MTP2 here, and it's uh, value zero. Okay, I go back here. So this is my link set. I have two links in the link set and two routes. The, the routes are the ones we see below here. So since I'm connected directly, it's simpler. I just have one local route and one remote route. So the only difference here, if I take my destination route, this is my uh, point code. If I need, if I wanted to go to STPs, I would create new routes to those STPs. But here I'm connecting directly to the destination. Um, and uh, what is the destination? Is it an SP or STP? Again, this is for some uh, management messages. So depending on where you connect to. And here you will put all the link sets. If it's a direct connection, you have only one link set. But if you have uh, STPs, you may have two link sets here that you need to put two possible paths to reach your destination. Okay, one, uh, one or two link sets here. OPC normally, the OPC route, it's, it's your point code here and you will put all the link sets that come to your point code. So you just can just select it here. For example, if I have it here like this, just select it and add it to your uh, routes uh, here. Okay. So that's it for the MTP3 configuration. So you may want to have multiple link sets. You may have uh, want to have multiple routes if you reach multiple destinations. If you're doing an STP, that's all you need to do. If you do uh, ISOP configuration, you need to configure the ISOP section that is here. Right, so I will show this in another in another configuration where you will have a call control or SCCP, but I think it's not in my 
set up here. I just remove the SCCP from this configuration. It can also be there. Okay. So now I go back to the status. Well, you need it to activate the configuration, right? You just activate the configuration. Once you do all of this, then you can go to the status. Here, I already showed the MTP3 layer here. I can click on one. Let me start with the link set here. I want to start with the link set. I can click on the link set. You can see here in that link set, you have your two links and you have the link set information. You can see if it's active, you can deactivate it or inactivate it. Um, you can see if it was unavailable, how long it was unavailable in the system. It becomes unavailable if both links are down in this case. Um, so there's some information here, but that, not that much. If you click on links here, you will get some information about each of the link. You can see if that particular link is up. You can see if it's, you can see if it's inhibited. So it, if it has been inhibited from the remote side, you will see it here. Or you can here say, I want to inhibit it and apply the states. Like I said, I don't use this uh, so often. I use more the uh, lower layer deactivate i find it more uh you have more control at that level when you're doing some testing you see here the priority of that uh, link and other information here okay if i go back here to the uh, status no there's no other status i want to show well you have the lower layers here, the MTP2 link and the M2PA link, and you have the upper layer here, which is your ISAP tag that is connecting to. Uh, oh yeah, there's the route information. Yes, you can see the route here if there's some messages that are being sent, how many times it became unavailable, and uh, so you have information. Not used so much because normally when the Rest of the configuration is done correctly, the link set and link. Uh, there's never any problem at the route level. So this is uh, what I want to show is the, uh, not this one here, this one here, the signaling trace, right? To, to have a signaling trace of your, of your system, you want to uh, connect SSH and type TB sync trace like this. This will start capturing your uh, TDM information. So this is your MTP2 link and also your IP information. The IP information is here and this includes the M2PA link. Okay. When you start capturing information, you will see that it creates files like this, IP49, SS7, 32. So it's two separate files, one for TDM, one for IP. And you see there's packets received and transmitted here. All right. So for my, for my test, what I want to do is bring down a link. So I will go here. Disable, apply. So this disable my MTP2 link. All right, so you see now it's not up anymore. I want also to, uh, not an UA, M2PA here. Disable my M2PA link. Like this, so now both links are down. Okay. So if I do this, I just want to go back to my MTP3 status. So you see my MTP2 link now is down, my M2PA link is down, and my uh, MTP3 link is down here. Let me just show here. Yeah, so both links are down, links are just down, okay? So, and then I want to reactivate them. I will reactivate my M2PA link here. I'm going to come back up. 
If I go here in the status, I am 2PA came back up here and you see the link zero, which is my 2PA is back up. And my link set is back up because I have at least one link working. I want to bring up also my other link here, re-enable my empty two link. So it's gonna come back up. Okay, so when you re-enable the second link in the link set, it always takes a bit more time because the first one is brought up in emergency. The second one is brought up in normal mode where it verifies if the link is good. If I do a refresh here, I see my two links are back up to normal. The next thing I want to do while I'm capturing, I want to do a trace. I want to do a call. I mean, a call to the system. So there was a call that was done. Let me just go down here to call trace. You can see a call here that came. And maybe I can just start it. Apply. You see my call is ongoing here. And uh, there's a little tool here that we can use. It's called auto refresh. So here I can click on that and it's gonna auto refresh my my link every two seconds. See how long the call lasts. So I'm gonna stop this call. And you will see now it stopped and you can see information about that call. So I want to show you here the capture we got. So Q to quit, you type yes. Then you need to connect with SFTP. Refresh this. It gives me my two files here, which I will save and look at my traces. First one is the IP trace. So it was IP49, IP49 that is here. Uh, when you get those traces, you see there's a lot of information uh, displayed here, and you can see some red here aboard. That's when we brought the link down. Okay. And so you can uh, filter some traffic. So here you can do SCTP to CDM 2PA traffic. This, is, this will eliminate anything else that is not SCTP. Uh, but you see here the links. Uh, well, let, let, let us look at this first. So let's, let us go to the abort. That's when we brought down the link. So the link went down here and somewhere here it came back up. Uh, so you see here when you bring a link down, it tries to reconnect every time. And, and when it's, it's available, it's going to go all the way up and have an alignment okay, from both sides like this. Okay, so that's at the M2PA level. When it has reached this level, then we can look only at the MTP3 level. So you can type MTP3 here, and it's around here that it came back up. Okay, so we see here our SLTM message. Okay. Uh, the general information that the Wireshark will give us is the point codes that are being used for this uh, message here. So you see SLTM, SLTM, SLTA, SLTM. Okay, so we're going to look at one of them. So this specific management message at the MTP3 level. So MTP3 information as the point codes, OPC, DPC, and you see them here as well. You have this SLC value in this case. It's the SLC value that says this link is link number zero. Okay, And then you have the network type. Okay, so all of these information will be verified end to end. And when we get the, oh, let me just go down a little bit here. Have the SLTA, so signaling, signaling link test message okay, with information, which is just test link one. Okay? And when you get the SLTA, you get the exact same thing replied. So it needs to be the same network indicator. OPC, DPC, of course, reversed because it's coming from the other side and the SLC value needs to be the same. 
If any one of those values are not equal, it won't accept, it won't send an SLTA, and you will see only SLTMs being sent. Okay, and it's sent from both sides. So you see this SLTM, it's sent from 0, 2 to 0, 1, and also 0, 1 to 0, 2 is sending the SLTM. So both sides are verifying the information. And you see the traffer, traffic restart allowed message that I mentioned before. There's other messages I did not, uh, manage message I did not explain. Change back, act, change back declaration. So that's when you uh, send traffic from one link to the other. And these are MTP3 messages that are being uh, exchanged between the two sides to understand, okay, do I need to retransmit this packet? And, and uh, are we ready to receive those packets? So this is also being exchanged in the links. Okay, so let me, so this is all we want. I want to show for the IP side. Then I want to show the SS7 side. The difference between the IP and SS7 is the, it's here, it's MTP2, and it's not using SCTP and M2PA as lower layer. We can see somewhere it sends SIOS and SIO. This is when the links go down. And we can see that it's uh, SIN. SIN is a status indication uh, normal. Okay, so that's normal. And that's when the link goes up. So as soon as the link goes back up, MTP3 will start to send the messages. And you see, it's the same messages that we saw on the M2PA. So it's exactly the same information, network indicator, point codes, signaling link, uh, value which in this case is one. So the M2PA link is zero and the MTP2 link is one. So that identifies this particular link and it has as SLTM and with another packet information here. So it's sent from both sides and acknowledged from both sides, SLT. I can filter out only the MTP3 messages. So you can see, we don't see the MTP2 messages anymore. And we made uh, some calls so we can see the eyes up layer. So this is the upper layer. So if I look just at one eyes up call, I will see my lower MTP2 information, which doesn't have much here. The MTP3, which has the point codes and how to reach the destination and how it sends the data. And uh, the ISN user part, which is really the call information. So that's the uh, upper layer information that we have. Okay. So you can see all the messages and they're all running over MTP3 here, either one way or the other way. And release messages. Okay. So that's what we can see with MTP3. Um, what else did I want to show here? Uh, okay. Yep. That's it for these traces. So that's how we, we troubleshoot. Uh, oh yeah, there's one more thing I wanted to show. That's how we troubleshoot the uh, uh, MTP3 is normally we make sure that the lower layers are up. If they are up, then we take a signaling trace. When we look at the signaling trace, we will find if the point codes are good, if it's a correct network, if the SLC value is correct and confirm all of that. If ever we can't uh, look we can find the solution in the status or in the traces, then we can do a, a TB report. So the TB report here is just create, it creates a file. It has all kinds of logs in the system for that. The last thing I wanted to show you was the, uh, I put some links in the presentation. So how to install the products, MTP3 overview and configuration, troubleshooting support. So I put those links up here in my other browser. So link to product installation. So how to install the products, either TNG or TSG. MTP3, just a global information on MTP3, but you can find a lot of information in the, um, on the web on MTP3, it's just the MTP3 protocol. Uh, here is how to configure uh, MTP3, and it will depend on what type of system you have. So the configuration I did in the lab is this one, MTP2, MTP3, eyes up. So it explains all the steps 
to reach what I have done. But it could be also M2PA, MTP3 eyes up. It could be uh, MTP2 to M2PA, and there's other other configurations here. Troubleshooting, all kinds of troubleshooting, but I think for uh, MTP3 is mostly this one here, low level signaling trace. So this is useful. Uh, and then uh, you have other support tools uh, for this. All right, so this concludes our MTP3 presentation. So thank you for participating.